Welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of Tel Batash. We're in the area where Samson and the Philistines and the events that happened between Samson and the Philistines took place. This is where he lit the foxes on fire. You can see vineyards down here below. I should mention this also is the same route that the Philistines returned the Ark of the Covenant in Bet Shemesh, which is just up the road just a little bit from here. And you'll also be able to see in this video uh, Samson's hometown, his tomb, and uh, the things that happened uh, right here in this area. So in this video, we're gonna be focusing upon the life of Samson and the things that took place here. Now the life of Samson is probably one of the most difficult persons in the Bible to really understand. Because what you see is this blend between God's sovereign grace and Samson's human choices. And they kind of mesh and is far from perfect, but God accomplishes his will. Yet in the midst, Samson is a very immature, spiritual believer exercising his own human choices that turn out uh, kind of bizarre at times. So anyway, we're gonna be looking at uh, some of the things that happened right here. Some amazing, fascinating things happened right here. So Timnah, and I should mention uh, this Tel Batash that we're filming. You can see it kind of in the background. It's not big, but that is the biblical Timnah. And so a lot of events happened right here. So Timnah is where kind of uh, Samson's life centers around. So we've chosen this uh, tell here to do this. Now Timnah is about 10 acres in size and it's located about halfway between Joppa, a coastal town on the Mediterranean Sea, and Jerusalem. And it's on a main thorough route as well. It's on one of the routes that go up to uh, Jerusalem from the coastal plain. Now Timnah is mentioned 10 times in the Bible and it's in a rich agricultural area as you can see and it's by the stream called the Nahal Sorek stream. Now as we mentioned Samson is a very interesting Bible figure that presents some significant challenges to understand and many have kind of tripped over this and don't really know how to understand the life of Samson because sometimes it appears like God's doing some things weird or it appears like Samson's a way out of God's will. So in this video, we're gonna help you understand the life of Samson because it does present some, some deep theological analysis in order to get right. So we're gonna really help you in this area. And at the same time, we're gonna see some amazing things that took place uh, right here. So the life of Samson is a blend of God's sovereignty and Samson's human choices. Many decisions Samson made were sinful and foolish. However, despite his sinful and foolish choices, God still used him to accomplish his sovereign purposes. However, it appears Samson's choices negatively affected what he could have accomplished for God had he been more obedient and wise. Samson's life seems to reveal a very immature believer who follows their sinful desires rather than walking in the spirit and exemplifying wisdom and spiritual maturity. Now, in order to understand Samson's life, we have to understand something about the book of Judges. The period of the Judges takes place in a period of Israel's history when they were very spiritually immature. So they were a spiritually immature people at this time. Their two famous leaders, Moses and Joshua, had died and now they were on their own. And the book of Judges shows a struggle of the nation of Israel and kind of floundering. They don't have a leader and they're just kind of searching. And there's a phrase that is repeated over and over in the book of Judges and that is they had no king and everyone did what was right in their own eyes. And you see this kind of bizarre events that take place. Now Samson is listed in Hebrews 11 in the Hall of Faith chapter as a person who had faith. So we're gonna talk about some of the negative choices of Samson, but at the same time, he was a man of faith. He's found in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 as a person who was of faith. So we do wanna give him the credit where credit is due, but we will also reveal some of the weaknesses that he had as well. Now Samson had a supernatural birth and purpose. Like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Hannah, and Elizabeth, the mother of Samson was barren and was unable to have children. And you kind of see that theme regularly in scripture where 
before a person of great importance comes on the scene, the mother is buried and God does a supernatural work. So God visited Samson's parents through an angel. In Judges 13 it says, There was a certain man of Zorah, and you can see in this video, tell Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had borne no children. Should, should mention that uh, Samson was from the tribe of Dan. Uh, eventually, Dan moved, the tribe of Dan moved up to northern Galilee, up in the Caesarea Philippi area, north of the Sea of Galilee. But at this time, they were still, the tribe of Dan was still here in this area. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and give birth to a son. Now therefore be careful not to drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. For behold, you shall conceive and give birth to a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, for the boy shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. So God's purpose for Samson was to begin to deliver the nation of Israel from the hands of the Philistines. He was a Nazarite, and God ordered Samson to be consecrated by being a Nazarite from birth, meaning separated or dedicated. That was what the term Nazarite means, separated or dedicated. Now this was a unique vow, applicable during the Old Covenant of national Israel, whereby a non-Levite, and Samson was a Danite, he was not a Levite, could dedicate his life to full-time service to God. This vow required that their hair not be cut, no alcoholic beverages were to be consumed, and no touching of anything dead was allowed. This was according to Judges 13, this Nazarite vow in, in number 6. Now God also provided Samson with unbelievable superhuman strength to be used against the Philistines, providing Samson's vow of submission was fully kept. And we'll see later when his hair is cut off, he loses his strength. So his superhuman ability was related to keeping his Nazarite vow. Now when Samson was grown, he comes down here to Timnah from Zorah. So Zorah is just a few miles up the road, kind of a few miles up the valley. and. Timna is the tell that we're overlooking here, and you can see that. In Judges 14, it says, Then Samson went down to Timna, so he came down from Zorah down to Timna, from his hometown right down here, and saw a woman in Timna, one of the daughters of the Philistines. So he came back and told his father and mother, I saw a woman in Timna, one of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me as a wife. And here's where some people are saying, you know, Samson was just following his flesh, and maybe he was. But anyway, it's, it's interesting here. It says, he said to his uh, father, get her for me as a wife. Then his father and his mother said to him, Is there no woman among the daughters of your relatives or among all our people that you should take a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she looks good to me. However, his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord, for he was seeking an occasion against the Philistines, meaning God was seeking an occasion against the Philistines. Now at that time, the Philistines were ruling over Israel. So this event that, that Samson comes down here to Timnah and wants this, uh, this Philistine wife really is of the Lord. Now that might appear like a problem, but we're going to see that there's really no problem in the fact that Samson uh, did seek out this woman. That was not forbidden, and let me tell you exactly why. Now as I mentioned, this verse has caused much debate and appears very difficult to understand. Didn't God forbid the Israelites to marry foreign women? And why would Samson desire an unbelieving wife who it appears he was just attracted to because of her outward beauty? So here's a, a first some challenges, but we're going to answer those, so uh, follow along. Now first of all, God only prohibited the Israelites from marrying Canaanite women from the seven nationalities that made up the Promised Land. The Philistines likely had conquered and settled or had been transplanted to this location here and were not part of the people group of Canaan. So the Philistines did not originate from the Canaanite groups infected by the Amorite sins as mentioned in Genesis 15. 
The Philistine land was considered separate from the Canaanite land, as mentioned in Exodus 13. And the people group was distinguished from the Canaanites, as mentioned in Joshua 13. So the Philistines weren't part of the seven uh, nationalities that made up Canaan that uh, the Israelites were forbidden to marry. Now also, Boaz married Ruth, who was a Moabite, from whom the lineage of David and Christ came. So the Israelites weren't for, forbidden to, to marry all foreign women, just certain foreign women, those being the Canaanites. So there is no direct conflict with God's commands and his possible moving in the heart of Samson to be attracted to a Philistine woman. However, even if it were sinful of Samson and arose wholly of him, and God simply allowed it for his own purposes, it still could be something of the Lord. Whether God is actively doing or passively allowing it, he is working. That is simply how God operates in a sinful world. Humans sin, and God works despite that sin. Now Samson demonstrates his superhuman ability by killing a lion with his bare hands. So here we now begin to see uh, God supernaturally using Samson and demonstrating and using his supernatural, superhuman strength. It says in Judges 14, Then Samson went down to Timnah with his father and mother and came as far as the vineyards of Timnah. And interestingly, right here there's vineyards right by this tell here that we're shooting this from, from uh, old ancient uh, Timnah. And behold, a young lion came roaring toward him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, so that he tore him as one tears a young goat, though he had nothing in his hand. But he did not tell his father or mother what he had done. So here we see this blend of God's sovereignty moving and leading Samson, but we also begin to see some of Samson's foolish choices. So here Samson neglects the wise counsel of his parents. And so we're, we'll begin to see the cost and he pays for that. So now we're going to see Samson breaking uh, his Nazarite vow. He's going to touch something dead. Now God's going to have mercy on him, but we still see Samson beginning to be lax and making these human choices that are not biblical and that are not godly choices and were not according to the Nazarite vow. So in Judges 14 it says, Now he went down and talked to the woman, and she looked good to Samson. When he returned later to take her, he turned aside to look at the carcass of the lion, and behold, a swarm of bees and honey were in the body of the lion. So he scraped the honey into his hands and went on, eating it as he went. When he came to his father and mother, he gave some of it to them, and they ate it. But he did not tell them that he had scraped the honey out of the body of the lion. So here, Samson violates part of his Nazarite vow, and he touches this dead carcass. So next, Samson's going to throw a party for his marriage, marrying this Philistine woman, and he proposes a riddle. But then he succumbs to his wife's pressure to reveal it. So here we see Samson falling and not, not being strong in his faith and succumbing to the pressure of this Philistine woman. So in Judges 14 it says, Then his father went down to the woman, and Samson made a feast there. For the young men customarily did this. When they saw him, they brought 30 companions to be with him. So we have this feast of the Philistines and Samson and his family. Now this customary feast was literally a drinking party. Now we're not certain whether or not Samson drank because the scripture doesn't say, but there's a possibility that he did, and if he did, he would be violating another of his Nazarite vows. Then Samson proposes a riddle, and his wife deceives him into telling her, and she then tells her kinsman. So then the Spirit of God comes upon Samson, and he killed 30 Philistines. It says in Judges 14, 19, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily, and he went down to Ashkelon and killed 30 of them and took their spoil and gave the changes of clothes to those who told the riddle. And his anger burned, and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, who had been his friend. So this turmoil here causes a problem. Samson's mad. He leaves. His friends deceive him. He goes on up, kills these Philistines, and goes back on up to his hometown of Zor. Now then, Samson seeks revenge because his wife had been given to one of Samson's good friends. So in Judges 15 it says, 
Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took torches and tied the foxes tail to tail and put one torch in the middle between two tails. When he had set fire to the torches, he released the foxes into the standing grain of the Philistines, thus burning up both the shocks and standing grain, along with the vineyards and the grove. So uh, they raise wheat here in this valley as well. Right now they've got grapes, they've got olives, but the wheat fields are dormant right now. They'll soon be uh, planting them. And uh, anyway, so Samson right in this area lit the fields on fire with these foxes and just burned everything up. Well, you can imagine that that caused a lot of problems. So the Israelites deliver Samson to the Philistines bound in new ropes as a result. But Samson breaks the ropes like wax and kills 1,000 Philistines. So in Judges 15, 14, it says, when he came to Lehi, and you can see in these photos, this place is close to Zorah, the Philistines shouted as they met him. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily so that the ropes that were on his arms were as flax that burned with fire and his bonds dropped from his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, so he reached out and took it and killed a thousand men with it. So then after Samson kills these thousand Philistines with a jawbone, you can imagine how that must have been. Well, he was, he was exhausted and tired and thirsty and God supernaturally provides for him. It says in Judges 15, 18, then he became very thirsty and he called to the Lord and said, you have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant. And now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? But God split the hollow place that is in Lehi, so that water came out of it. When he drank, his strength returned and he revived. Therefore he named it en Hakor, which is in Lehi to this day. So he judged Israel 20 years in the days of the Philistines. Then Samson does something that is absolutely forbidden. He commits adultery with this harlot. So once again, we see this blend of God using him, but Samson making these foolish choices along the way. So we have God's sovereignty, the human element. God's so big and powerful, he can use the human agent who's fallen. Yet Samson could have done much more if he would have been obedient and walked closer to the Lord. In Judges 16, it says, Now Samson went to Gaza, and Gaza's right along the Mediterranean Ocean south of Tel Aviv and saw a harlot there and went into her. When it was told to the Gazites, and the Gazites were part of the Philistines, saying, Samson has come here. They surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the gate of the city. And they kept silent all night saying, let us wait until the morning light, then we will kill him. Now Samson lay until midnight and at midnight he arose and took hold of the doors of the city gate and the two posts and pulled them up with the bars. Then he put them on his shoulders and carried them up to the top of the mountain, which is opposite Hebron. So this would have been about 45 miles or around 75 kilometers from Gaza uphill and Hebron is around 3,000 to 3,500 feet. So Samson went from sea level, carrying these massive, huge gates that probably weighed tons, 45 uh, miles up a steep hill, up to Hebron. He was an absolutely superhuman uh, person. So even though Samson committed sexual sin with the prostitute, God had mercy on him and delivered him anyway. So once again, God's sovereignty, the human agent, God is still big enough to even use the sinful fallen agent in his great sovereign plan. So then Samson is defeated by the Philistines. So Samson's bad choices finally catch up with him, and now he is going to be defeated by the Philistines. It says in Judges 16, 4, After this it came about that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, Entice him, and see where his great strength lies, and how we may overpower him, that we may bind him to afflict him. Then we will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So they were going to pay her off big time for this. And so also we can see that Samson has this continual weakness for women and has a hard time controlling his sexual appetite. So then Delilah deceives uh, Samson. And the story is that Samson went in and Delilah uh, kept trying to entice him. And finally she just says, um, 
please tell me if, if, if you really love me, tell me. And finally, Samson uh, gives in to her, and he tells her the secret of, of his great strength and says, if you cut off my hair, I will lose my strength. So he fell asleep on her lap. She called in the Philistines, and they cut off Samson's hair. Tragic. And then Delilah speaks to Samson and says, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out at as other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Then the Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes, and they brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze chains, and he was a grinder in the prison. So. Samson's foolish choices finally catch up with him, and God's uh, mercy finally comes to an end at this point. God's going to once again offer mercy at the end of Samson's life, but Samson continually makes these sinful choices, breaking his Nazarite vow, going into a prostitute, and then taking this Philistine woman, Delilah, telling him his secret. So he just has this spiritual immaturity wherein he does not follow God's strict commands, and therefore he pays a great price. His eyes are gouged out, and he becomes a grinder. That is, they had this big uh, pole that went out, this grinding stone, and he would spend all day, every day, going around just grinding the grain, and that was really the job of oxen and, uh, and animals of that nature, so a tremendous uh, price that Samson paid. Now at the end of Samson's life, God uses Samson uh, once again in his death, and the reason he does it is because God's name is mocked. So this is really special here. So when God's name is mocked and his glory is given to false gods, he chooses once again to use Samson for his sovereign purposes. So in Judges 16:23 it says, Now the lords of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon their god, and to rejoice, for they said, our God has given Samson, our enemy, into our hands. When the people saw him, they praised their God, this Dagon, for they said, Our God has given our enemy into our hands, even the destroyer of our country, who has slain many of us. So they are mocking uh, God, Yahweh, and they are saying that Dagon, their God, is bigger than Yahweh, and that their God has overtaken Yahweh and Samson and Israelites. So that's going to cause God to rise up. And you'll note one thing in Scripture, whenever God's glory, whenever His name, whenever Him being the, the one true God is challenged, He rises up and reveals his strong hand against them. So we'll see that. It says, so it happened that they were, when they were in high spirits, this is the Philistines, when they were in high spirits, celebrating their victory and worshiping their God Dagon and diminishing the true God of Israel, Yahweh, it says, they said, call for Samson that he may amuse us. So they called for Samson from the prison and he entertained them and they made him stand between the pillars. Then Samson said to the boy who was holding his hand, Let me feel the pillars on which the house rests, that I may lean against them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. About three thousand men and women were on the roof looking on while Samson was amusing them. So they were mocking Samson and giving glory to their god Dagon and celebrating their victory over Israel. Then Samson called to the Lord and said, O Lord God, please remember me, and please strengthen me just this time, O God, that I may once again be avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Now we should note that the time during which Samson was grinding and in many, many days, months, possibly years passed, that Samson's hair grew back, and so now he has his strength once again, and he feels for the pillars and asked the boy to show him where the pillars are. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bent with all his might, so that the house fell on the lords and on all the people who were in it. So the dead whom he killed at his death were more than those whom he killed in his life. Then his brothers and all his father's household came down and took him, brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshethal in the tomb of Manoah his father. Thus he had judged Israel 20 years. And so once again in this video you can see this tomb, the believed place where Samson um, is rested. So 
What can we learn as we wrap up this video here about Samson's life? Once again, we began by saying that Samson's life is very challenging to understand. So let's wrap this up and let's put together what are some real sound biblical theological answers for what appears sometimes as some difficult uh, things to understand. So first thing we can learn is God is sovereign and uses sinful people for his purposes. And even in God's garden of grace, broken trees produce fruit. So God is so big that he can even use sinful people for his sovereign purposes. We also learn that Samson failed to listen to the counsel of his parents, so that caused him problems. It also appears that Samson was bitter and vengeful, which also caused him problems. Samson had a weakness for women, which caused him problems. Samson broke many of his Nazarite vows and therefore lost his strength. Samson walked in the flesh instead of the spirit much of the time. And Samson had raw abilities, but never refined them and submitted them fully to God's control and lordship. So he had this supernatural strength, but he didn't really refine and submit them to God's authority. Therefore, it cost him dearly. And Samson paid a heavy price for his continual neglect of submitting to God. It cost him his eyes, it cost him his life, and he spent his time before he died going around this stone grinding wheat like an animal. So Samson failed in many ways, but once again, God still used Samson. He's mentioned in the book of Hebrews as being a man of faith. So he did have faith, even though he had many weaknesses as well. And God used his faith, but God also punished him for his weaknesses. And once again, it cost him his life. So we can see from Samson's life some great, great lessons. We see God is sovereign. We see God supernaturally called Samson. We see that God gave him supernatural strength. And we see that God did use Samson. But at the same time, we see that Samson, because of his human weaknesses and because of his disobedient spirit and his kind of lax, slothful spirit in obeying God and not being fully devoted to the Lord, we see that Samson's life was cut short and we see that Samson's ministry was diminished and weakened as well. So great lessons for us today. If we want to have a strong, uh, faithful ministry, we need to be obedient to the Lord. We need to be serious and devoted to Christ instead of being kind of lackadaisical in our walk with Him. God can still use weak people, and He does, but how much more if we would refine ourselves and if we would grow to spiritual maturity, God could use us even more. And that's the tragic lesson of Samson. He could have been used far more, but he was used a little bit, and then he pays a serious price because of his disobedience to the Lord. So. Great lessons for us today. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and God bless.